Morning, Glorious. May I be the first to tell you how fully Stellanaries you look? As usual. Don't forget, science test today, plus if and when the predicted class five solar flare arrives, you are for sure gonna wanna check it out. When I tell you the news, you're gonna go Nova. No, Supernova. Yeah, Supernova guaranteed. Micro is coming here for the very first wrapped onto in space. <laughs> They're appearing right at this very station. Not a giant screen performance, not a hologram. They're appearing in the Lernarius heart fluttering flash. I heard it on the CRR news. Wait, wait. I haven't even told you the best part. They're having a contest. The winner gets to dance on stage with Protozoa. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm gonna get to dance with Protozoa. Look at the time. How to get to be so late? Control myself. Time minor task major. There's one thing to be thankful for. At least you don't live down there. Welcome to your interactive Earth history textbook. Please select your interactive chapter of Earth Generations. You have selected Baby Boomers. What did kids even think about in the 60s? They didn't even have a protozoa. We had Elvis. We had the Supremes. We had the Beatles. Mr. Kelly. I'm truly sorry my extra credit essay, The Beatles, the message and music contained. Eight run-on sentences, six sentence fragments, excessive use of commas, countless subjects, verb disarrangements, and improper use of semicolon. Putrid. As for your comment that the Beatles songs are not a suitable subject for this composition, may I refer to you Leonard Bernstein's statement in the current issue of Time Magazine that the Beatles songs are equal to that of Franz Sherbert and to Kenneth Times in the same issue. The Beatles lyrics are often reminiscent of T.S. Eliot, and I'm very sorry. No, distress, to learn that in your day, you weren't allowed to write English essays on the music of Glenn Miller, whoever he was. May I also remind you that while your subjects and your verbs agree, what you practice and what you preach, don't. It was the summer where everyone thought the Russians were going to invade Long Island any minute, and President Kennedy was going to Berlin to hand them off. But I had other things on my mind that summer. So did everyone else on my block. The Meyer twins, they were always fighting about something, and they were always teasing me. Once behind the Rossi house, Nikki said he wanted to kiss me, then spit in my ear. Nikki was the worst. I read everything I could about love like modern romance, and encyclopedias, even stuff that took a whole month to get in the mail. But still, I felt like it was this big secret everyone was in on but me. Except sometimes late at night when Cheryl came home. As soon as she moved in last winter, the boys started coming around. They all wanted her to go steady and be their girl, but she wasn't interested. If I could just be her for one night or even just one minute. I found out everything about her. That every night she played the same song, Ruler of My Heart. And I knew that every Friday after school she'd buy a brand new scarf at Woolworth and that she'd put on her favorite perfume every night before going to bed. It was ambush, ambush. And then I knew that she thought JFK was the coolest Catholic she knew outside of her dad, and I knew that she thought Brenda Lee was all right because she had turned out a date with Ricky Nelson. She didn't know me or my name, but I wanted to laugh her laugh and dream her dreams. The Russians never did invade Long Island, but I learned some things that summer, things that I'd never forget. When I was very small, we used to take our sleds down in the wintertime. And the only hills we had were these ice-covered stone steps of some houses down the street. 
we would fill them with snow, make them smooth, and slide down them all day. It was very dangerous, you know, far too steep. And sure enough, one day, a kid named Rufus came down too fast and hit the sidewalk. We saw his face just split open, right there in front of us. And I remember looking at his bloody, open face, thinking that that was the end of Rufus. But the ambulance came, took him to the hospital, fixed the broken bones, sewed it all up. The next time I saw Rufus, he just had a little line down the middle of his face. I never got over that. That was what one person could do for another. Fix him up, sew up the problem, make him whole again. That was the most marvelous thing in the world to me. I thought it was the one concrete thing in the world a human being could do for another. Fix him up, you know? Make him whole again. I wanted to do that. It used to be so important to me. This was truly being God. No, I wanted to cure. <laughs> I used to care so much, I wanted to cure. It used to matter, I used to care. I mean about people and how their bodies hurt. I think, I think I stopped. Generation X. Ugh, sounds so boring. What did people even do with their time before data zapping? Totally boring. People sit around passing notes all day. Not really boring. More like embarrassing. Hey, do you guys know who this is? Look, it says Chester Copperpot, missing while in pursuit of local legend. Reclusive scavenger claims. I have the key to One-Eyed Willie? Whoa, do you guys realize what we could do? Just, what if this map actually leads to One-Eyed Willie's rich stuff? If I had his rich stuff, I'd pay all my dad's bills. So maybe he could get to sleep at night instead of finding a way for all of us to stay here in the goondocks. Don't you realize? Chester Copperpot was a pro. He never made it this far. The next time you see the sky, it will be in another town. The next time you take a test, it will be in some other school. Our parents want the best for us, and it's their time up there. But down here, it's our time. That's all over the second we ride up Troy's bucket. I want to. I... I want to know what it's like. I'm so afraid I'll be bad at it, though. I watch how it's done from the movies and TV and stuff, but I don't know if I can kiss like that. How do they breathe? You're supposed to hold your breath, right? Unless you get air through your nose but my nose is always stuffy. Bad allergies. What if I can't kiss for long? What if I faint? Has, has anybody ever fainted from, from kissing? Well, you see, there's this guy, Johnny. He likes me. I know he likes me because he told me he likes me. And I like him too. He wants to take me out to the movies. And I have a feeling he wants to kiss me. I'm so nervous about it though. What if people watch us instead of the movie? What if they know how bad a kisser I am? You know what? Forget it. Forget it. I am not kissing Johnny at the movies. It'll have to be somewhere else. Oh, maybe one who walks me to my door. Maybe then I'll let him kiss me, and that would be so nice. Okay, so here's my game plan. No kissing unless he walks me to my door. That's that, and only for a few seconds. Then I'll run to my house and pray that I wasn't a bad kisser.
Kennedy said, I do not believe that any of us should exchange places with any other people or generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion. Grown-ups are always telling you where they were when President Kennedy was shot, which they all know to the exact second. Which makes me almost jealous. Like, I should have something important enough to know where I was when it happened. But I don't yet. The fact that it was a better time then, when people knew what they were supposed to do and how to make the world better. Now, nobody knows anything. Well, we know who's popular, and that social studies is boring. Or that Brian always has stomach trouble. But nobody knows anything important. Instead of changing the world, we sit in class and write notes about other people. Everybody writes notes like that. We write notes like that. But we write notes that are true. I think people just want to believe things about other people, so they decide what's true without even asking. And it's not fair, because you have to live with it anyways. Millennials. Finally, something interesting! Didn't millennials ruin everything? I think I might need my chill chamber for this one. Everything was ruined when we got here. We had a right to push back. It's our job to deal with it now. It was so good to be with people that felt like shit. I kept feeling like, like, I don't deserve to feel this bad, you know? And someone got up there and said, come on guys, let's show the world Laramie is not this kind of a town. But it is that kind of a town. If it wasn't this kind of a town, then why did it happen here? I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? That's a lie. Because it happened here. So how could it not be a town where that kind of thing happens? It's like, totally like, like looking at an Escher painting and getting all confused. Like it's totally circular logic and how can you even say that? And we need to mourn this and, and we need to be sad that we live in a town, a state, a country where shit like this happens. And I'm not gonna sit back and say, we need to show the world this didn't happen. I mean, those are people trying to distance themselves from this crime. And we need to own this crime, I feel. Everyone, everyone needs to own it. We are like this. We are like this. We are like this. I jumped the teacher. It wasn't very impulsive. I like planned it. Jumped both coffees cause I wasn't sure which one she'd take. Then I wrote I had nothing on her forehead cause I want to be a legend. I want to be something more like Lauren Hill. She's not like my dad's. They're so mediocre. I should get going. Thanks for the pizza and games. I used to come out here with one of my dad's. Did he buy weed from you? He's so sad. I hated coming out here. Never liked the pizza as a kid, but now it ain't that bad. Might be my last slice for a while, but don't worry. I didn't tell anyone about you or your drug dealer friend. I told them I got it from Sarah and hate her. Atlas, I thought I could stop myself. Like, even when I bought the pills, got the coffee, gave it to her. I thought I would, I don't know if I could be like Lauren. <laughs> this morning I was watching TV and Katie Couric was interviewing this fireman and she was being like all meaningful and she goes, can you possibly explain what it feels like to be searching through the rubble for your own friends? And he goes, well, we're all out here doing our best, Katie. We're out here searching with broken hearts. Broken hearts? He's a fireman, you know what I'm saying, he's a tough customer. Even if his heart was broken, Miss Oates, he wouldn't say it. 
But there he was in front of the TV. And so he says broken hearts because he's already agreed in his mind to let himself be scripted by this media machine that wants to con us all into thinking that we were surprised. I noticed it. I noticed it happen. Don't get me wrong, it was all new information. But there's a difference between not knowing something's gonna happen and acting like it's a surprise. <laughs> and I know this sounds like I'm being cynical, Miss Oates, but this is my point. What's really cynical, it seems to me, is this. Take a country with the most hyperthyroid self-concept in the history of the world. Kick everyone's ass for 150 years, then build a pair of ultra-tall buildings in the most prominent city of the world, taller than almost anything, then do nothing to protect them from the air, then act surprised when something bad happens, and then sell this fake surprise over the airwaves to a bunch of people who are so dead inside that they can't cry until they see 5,000 people die. That's cynical. Don't quote me. Generation X. Okay, so Gen Z was like, peace and harmony, right? Ha, huh, nope. Not at all. There's a lot going on under the surface that people are just grazing over. Chill out, it's just me. You and Uncle Frank took the room that Ainsley and I are supposed to be in. It's okay, it's just now my family and I have to be in the same bedroom and it's super hot and uncomfortable on the floor and I can't sleep. So I was texting my best friend Jessica, who has insomnia too, but my parents were like, the light from your phone was keeping us up all night. And I was like, but I can't sleep in there. Like, then go somewhere. And I was like, fine. So they've been getting on my nerves all day. So I came down here. What are those old photos? Are you keeping those? They're so creepy. Don't be so weird. I already saw them. I told you. You, you can keep looking. I'm just going to sit here. Why do you think Grandpa had those photos? I mean, aren't they kind of... racist? It, it was so weird going through all of Grandpa's stuff today. I mean, I kept being like, I'm related to this guy? <laughs> like, what the F? It's so weird you can be related to someone you've never met before a total stranger, basically, and still have the same amount of genetic material. Like, some random person is just walking on the street and they happen to have the same exact amount of genetic material as you. Which probably happens all the time, actually. I mean, you can't call them grandpa. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so weird. <laughs> Can I, Inst Instagram? Can I take a picture for Instagram? Fine, never mind. It's probably good you're keeping those though. I mean, they may be worth something. You can sell anything on the internet. <laughs> I'm talking about Mexican children in cages. No, not just Mexican, mostly Guatemalan and Honduran and like all over, in cages. Cages! I'm knitting scarves, well, with Amnesty International. The whole club's knitting them. Or I guess, learning how to knit. They cost $25. I just can't stop thinking about it. All those Mexican kids in cages. There's so many of them and they're stuck in these camps. No, not fun camps, really horrible camps. Some of them are Travis's age. I really hope someone is reading to them. Five to six is a really important age, especially for ESL. At my youth ministry, we tutor first graders at Jesse Beck. And the later they come, the harder it is. We're just super pissed. That's why we're knitting scarves. Everyone wants to feel important in life. Thing is, 
no matter how important you are, there's always going to be someone more important. And people get so uptight about that. Oh no, they're better than me. Like, God, don't they realize important doesn't matter? It's confidence. The most confident person in the room wins every single time. Doesn't matter if it's real, people are dumb. They won't know the difference. You know what? I'm going to tell you the exact reason why I'm having lunch with you today. You see, I don't really have a lot of friends at the moment. And to be completely honest with you, I'm not interested at all. My whole generation is a bunch of mouth breathers who will literally have a seizure if you take away their phone for one second. They can't have a conversation without emojis. And they think the whole world wants to know that they're having a taco. Explanation point, smiley face, smiley face. Look, I'm an old soul. I like old music, I like old movies, and I like old people. Bottom line is, I don't have anything in common with those people. They don't have anything in common with me. Maybe they don't like me. Extra credit. Please select an Earth pen pal. Pen pal selected. Video from Earth now uploading. Mama gave me this flashlight to signal the aliens. She said, of course there's life out there. Now go outside. But now, it's just me and y'all. The aliens of the universe. So if you can hear me, I'm Christmas Flint, human female. I think you'd like me. I think you'd want to be my friend. I sometimes pee myself when I get nervous. I don't know why. I just want to tell you, I hope you live a good life. And I hope you have a friend. Hope you've got everything I've got. And I hope you're always safe and warm and dry and have food always. I hope you've got mama. I hope you keep her safe. I know you're gonna hear me. What I wanna say is this. I hope you've got friends like mine. And I hope you see us for all our bursting treasure. We'll be right here.